home of the Gators as they take on the Louisville Cardinals in a highly anticipated matchup here this afternoon. Well, it can be a terrifying experience to play here in Gainesville. We know that. They're still better looking than we are. Dan Schulman and Dick Vitale with you. We got the mentor in Patino. We got the protege in Donovan. Well, first of all, they're better looking than you, not me. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you this right now. Last year, Florida was overrated at number one when they went to Cardinal Country. This year, they're underrated. And they take on Rick Patino right now, who's got to get a great performance out of Dean and Garcia to be able to survive on the road today. Dean coming back from hernia surgery in the summer has had a couple of spectacular games. He and Garcia, a dynamite duo on the perimeter for Louisville. Matt Walsh hardly did anything at all against Louisville last year. He's got to play well for them to win. Dan, I really believe that Matt Walsh is going to have a big day today. He was shut out of his 0 for 8 in that last meeting when they hooked up. I think he's focused. I was watching him in the warm-ups. He's ready to play. Matt Walsh said he circled this game on his calendar almost a year ago. Billy Donovan, how far does he go back with Rick Pitino? Played for him in college. Played for him in the pros coached underneath them in Kentucky 0 and 5 career against Patino two at Marshall one here in the Louisville Florida matchup Patino is 19 and 1 against his former assistants you know what's really interesting about 15 minutes ago we were in a locker room with Billy Donovan he said I know what he's saying right now to his team <laughs> it's us against the world yep. baby he said I know because I sat there and I listened to all those speeches when I was at Providence and Rick Pitino helped Billy Donovan turn into a great player who wound up playing a little bit in the pros, really took his game to the next level. A look at the starting lineups. Louisville's banged up. Two front court subs are hurt. Francisco Garcia, a potential player of the year candidate. Florida, you know about the big three, Roberson, Walsh, and Lee. Keep an eye on number two, Corey Brewer. 6'8", long and lean, and a great defensive player. He's got Garcia to start the game. Yeah, he'll be tested tonight by the versatility of Garcia. Garcia kept that toe down, throws up a difficult shot and banks it home. Very active. I think this will be the last year you'll see him in a Louisville uniform. Here's Matt Walsh trying to get going early. He's already got as many points today as he had last year against the Cardinals. Dan, I told you a few minutes before game time, watching him in the warm-ups, he has really focused. A terrific drive by Walsh. Averaging 14 points per game, and he's been known to explode for 25 and 30-point games from time to time. The putback is good by Juan Diego Tejo Palacios, the freshman out of Columbia who wants to be known just as Juan Palacios, and we thank him for that. We'll call him King Juan if he plays like that. Gets <laughs> on the glass. Rick thinks he's going to ultimately be a special player. You watch Rick Pitino on the sideline. Guy that's a great teacher. Got a tremendous recruiting class coming in next year, but again, he's got some injuries right now. Brian Johnson, a big freshman forward, out for the knee with a knee problem. Here's Walsh again. Misses on the three. Rebound Garcia. Garcia can do everything. He can score. He can dish. He can rebound. He's a multi-talented performer. They're really missing also orders George. A yep. rebounder. 6.5 rebounds a game. Out with a foot injury. Ty Quan Dean buries the three. And a great start for the Cardinals. He's an outstanding shooter. One of the premier long-range shooters in the game. Had 30 against Stanford earlier. Their only loss was their good Iowa team who beat Iowa State last night. Dean and Walsh are star watch. Both of them off early here today. Seen some zone right out of Rick Pitino's club. Roberson. Well, Florida's been known to bust open a zone or two with their outside shooters. A held ball situation. It'll be Louisville ball as we send it to Doris Burke. Doris? And three of Florida's outstanding freshmen share a common thread that has helped to shape their lives. For Al Horford and Torian Green, both fathers were collegiate stars before moving on to careers in the NBA. For Joe Kim Noah, he is the son of former tennis great Yannick Noah. Now, Billy Donovan says their exposure to their father's careers helps them understand what it is to compete now. For Joe Kim, he said two things. Number one, I know what it is to have a work ethic to compete that high. And the second thing is distraction stick. I don't know if he's referring to that group behind you or not. <laughs> they are a distraction. They're having some fun. Larry O'Bannon banks at home doors. 9-2 Louisville leads. Torian Green, one of those three second-generation athletes, getting ready to check in for the Gators. I'll tell you one thing. She mentioned Noah. Noah certainly was a flamboyant tennis player. Had a lot of charisma. They zoned it a lot today, yep. early in this game. Lee inside. And the rebound to Garcia. Louisville, without any depth because of the injuries, might have to play more zone than they're normally accustomed to play. We used to see in Rick Pitino's teams 
Go hard, Some pressure, trap. There's Joe Kivanoa, son of Yannick. We'll see him a little bit later on today. One of the reasons that you don't see the full court pressure, normally as you look at Noah on the sideline, he'll get some minutes, very active player. Bottom line is he very rarely presses on a road. When he goes on a road versus at home, at home with the crowd, the adrenaline, the enthusiasm, he utilizes the pressure a lot more. Nice position inside. Ellis Miles gets the bounce. You and I did the game as Florida takes a timeout against Marquette two years ago. Miles suffered a serious knee injury, a torn ACL, missed all of the last season. He's come back with a vengeance this year, pulling down 8, 9, 10 rebounds a game. Well, he's averaging right now 10.5 a game off the glass. He's their Windex man. Great work ethic. We're going to watch him on the inside. He posts up too easily on the interior. Gets the ball in too deep. He had that real tough injury that we witnessed yeah. against Marquette. Hey, tonight, Marquette in Wisconsin, what a matchup that is. Bo Ryan, you talk about underrated, and Tom Green. They brought a lot of excitement to basketball in the state of Wisconsin. What a great start for Rick Pitino and the Cardinals. Up 11-2 here in a difficult road environment in Gainesville, Florida. Don't forget, coming up next after this game, there's more basketball later on today. Dick Oregon going to be taking on the number one team of the nation, the Fighting Illini of Illinois at the United Center. Brent Musburger, Steve Lavin, and Aaron Andrews will have that game. You want to talk about some outstanding performers. The Illini's backcourt is good as any in the country. they got a great backcourt, but Luther Head is one of the great all-support players in the game. Can shoot it. And Malik Kirsten, a diaper dandy for Oregon, is sensational. Brewer with a miss. Loose ball to David Lee, and the Gators sorely needed that. Yeah, they got to get break that momentum that Louisville has. Louisville ex executing really well, very efficient offensively, getting good ball movement, player movement. That bucket by David Lee snapped a 9-0 run for the Cardinals. You got to be active. When you're active, a lot of good things happen. You got to really have motion. Louisville winning last year up at Freedom Hall, 75-65. Wow. Wow. How about Garcia? I really believe this is his last year. I think Rick Pitino would agree that he's moving on. Torian Green and Adrian Moss with a tough catch on the baseline. Florida resets. Torian Green gives him a nice backdoor cut. And Walsh will go to the line for two. Nice feed from David Lee. Number three. We're going to watch right now. With the active. Coming up with the loose ball, Lee. They did a great job running a backdoor cut. High post entry and then a backdoor cut by Walsh. He said in a loss against Miami, I read some quotes. He said, Miami played well, but we didn't share the basketball yep. and we didn't play like we did earlier. And if we don't share the basketball and move the ball and get player movement, he said, Louisville will beat us easily on our floor. Big trouble Not here Walsh. for Louisville, even though they've got a nine-point lead. Palacios has picked up his second foul. So into the game for the Cardinals now is Brandon Jenkins, a point guard. They go small. Right now, Garcia will play the power forward at the offensive end, and Larry O'Bannon, who's only 6'4", is going to have to defend the power forward spot of the defensive end. Yeah, they're going to play small ball, but they're very active, very athletic. On the other side, that creates mismatch problems the other yes. way as well yep. with quickness. Full court pressure by Florida. He learned that from his boss. He's a disciple of Rick Pitino, Billy Donovan. Good trap. Nice step through, though, by Taekwondo Dean. 1987 took Providence to the Final Four, Mr. Pitino, yep. and his star shooter was Mr. Donovan. Walsh, a nice look ahead. Torian Green with great wheels. Torian Green's daddy coaches Florida. Atlantic, Sydney Green. We got so many father and sons now. We got Sean May, Scott May, Priscilla's, Dale yeah. Ellis. The Lucases. Ewing, yep. the Lucases. Yep. Florida already played Florida Atlantic, so Torian Green went up against his dad's team and played very well in a Gators win. Yeah, they assisted that game. Yep. Certainly had a little better personnel on his side. Wow, how he, good is this guy? He's <laughs> playing really well. I tell you, he's one of the versatile players in America. He's a complete player. He can play three positions on the floor. Francisco Garcia's already nailed a couple of threes, and he's got eight points in all. 2-2-1, two, 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 fresh. Little token, they go right back into the zone. Had a little look of maybe a 2 1 2 there. They changed the look and the movement of the basketball. Now they're in a 2 3 zone. Roberson and Walsh, great shooters on the floor right now for the Gators. A tough team to zone yep. against, but really, I can understand what Rick's doing. Roberson, he tough team. It. Tough team to zone. Very tough team. They get in the gap and shoot it. Roberson and Walsh, they are just really dynamite against the zone. But Rick Pitino really trying to save players 
and try to use some time. Dean, nice little hesitation, lays it in. Boy, he looks like a completely healthy guy. Been feeling some soreness, post-operative soreness, after having that sports hernia surgery in the summer. But well, that was a heck of a move. Great move to the basket. Great change of direction. Roberson nice with a big jump bounce. Stop. Moss has it knocked away. Here come the cards with numbers. Nice ball. Garcia to Dean. One best friend to another. Nice pass, though. Reversing the basketball. Utilization of what we call the skip pass. And get it to the open shooter. I mean, he's automatic, man. Nothing yeah. but nylon, Mr. Dean. Garcia with eight. Dean with eight. Torian Green. Al Horford. Boy, something tells me this game's not going to be played in the 50s by the time it's all said and done. Mr. Horford, if you recognize the name, his dad was a scholastic superstar years ago. Tito Horford. Played a little bit in the NBA. Now Garcia draws the foul. He's not just a standstill shooter. He can put it on the floor and go to the glass as well. It's a great venue, though. I tell you, the Roddy Reptiles really get after it down here. They're all pumped up around here, too, with the arrival of the savior in football, Urban Meyer. That's right. Urban was certainly a great choice by Jeremy Foley. But I think down the road, Ron Sook is going to make them regret letting him go. He's going to be a big winner at Illinois. in their program in just the last couple of days. For the details on that, let's go to Doris Burke. Dan, on Tuesday of this week, former Florida standout Major Parker arrested and charged with conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute cocaine. Now, according to an incident report, Parker had been the subject of an investigation by the Gainesville Police Department and the drug enforcement agents since November, approximately about one month's time. He was released Wednesday on $100,000 bond. A formal complaint filed. It will go to the federal grand jury. Parker, of course, one of Billy Donovan's Let's first go, recruits, Dana, was serving Dana. as a special assistant to the head coach, Let's essentially go, a GA in football lingo. Now, according Let's to go, AD Jeremy Foley, he was suspended immediately with pay. He will not perform any of his duties until the judicial process is complete. And when we spoke with Billy Donovan yesterday, Dick, he was obviously emotional. Well, you know, the bottom line is he got close to Major Parker. Suddenly you break your heart and you feel for him. But the bottom line is you got to wait until all the facts are in and let the courts decide and just allow it to be heard in the courtroom. That foul on Brandon Jenkins, his first. So Matt Walsh going to back to the line. We've seen Walsh get to the glass a couple of times, playing a very aggressive style of basketball so far here today. Well, I told you before the game, I said we're going to expect a big game out of him watching him in the yep. warm-ups. Hey, there's big news going on in the city of Louisville as well, away from basketball. It's the Wrights, W-H-A-S, the radio station, man. They're battling Kentucky and Louisville. And it will be announced this afternoon that Kentucky is going to get priority over Louisville and they are not happy. In fact, one exec from Louisville told me, he said, they can't beat us in football, can't beat us in basketball, so now they write a checkout, and they try to get the right. That's a great station, by the way. 38, 38 states can pick up the 50,000 watt WHAS. So the U.S. Dean launches another three as first miss. The University of Kentucky, I think starting in 2007, their games are going to be carried on what is now the biggest and strongest station in the city of Louisville, where the Cardinals games are currently played. And I guess the folks in Louisville obviously aren't too happy. Well, no, they've been carrying both for many a year, yeah. but Louisville's been the priority. Right, right. Now Kentucky's right. going to get priority in football and basketball. Roberson, nice dish down to Richard, and he is fouled. Florida really moving the ball well. And when Florida plays well, one of the reasons why is they share the basketball very well. You sound like a TV radio critic. Now, what are you, Rudy Barsky of USA? <laughs> Today. Come on, Dan Schumann, stay the, stay the basketball. <laughs> the foul on Garcia is first. <laughs> Big Chris Richard out of Lakeland, Florida, knocks down the first. You know, the pace in this game right now, tempo, really favors Florida because of the depth factor yeah. and because they have more bodies. Rick Pitino really limited with his substitution. Billy Donovan, Dick, has 11 players averaging at least four points per game. And that's why he feels, even though at this time of last year the team was ranked first, he didn't agree with that, now they're unranked. He thinks this year's team is better because those four freshmen give them a tremendous amount of depth. They were overrated last year at number one. I think they're a better team than last year's yeah. team. They love Corey Brewer, number two, and again, he's been given the tough task of defending Garcia. Dean goes right around Torian Green. O'Bannon from the corner. Louisville can't miss. I tell you, they're doing a great job shooting the ball. Dean might have gotten away with a carry right there. There's a little 2-2-1 press. 
John Wooden made this famous years and years ago when he had those dominant teams at UCLA. That's like before you were even born. <laughs> Louisville, by the way, Dick, now five of six from three-point range, and they're sitting back in the 2-3 again. Well, reminiscent of his days at Kentucky when they shot that three. Yep. Keep an eye on 21 in the middle for Florida. Mohamed Abakar, a good shooter. Here's Brewer, not known for his shot. Roberson has it swatted from behind by Francisco Garcia. And the Cardinals come out of the scrum. Garcia and O'Bannon are going to have the rebound today. O'Bannon again. Almost banked it in from in the corner. Florida comes back. They gotta get Robeson some shots. They've been doing a great job negating him any looks. Abacar, he can shoot it. A little bit strong off the back rim. And Garcia, another rebound for Louisville. Look at this pull up three. Maybe the first bad shot that the Cardinals have taken today. A little bit too quick. Tina likes shooting the long ball. He was the, one of the first to really take advantage of the three point shot when it became part of college basketball. In fact, Billy Donovan was his guy. Billy used to shoot it for down in Providence. Billy hardly played his first couple of years at Providence. Then Rick Pitino came in as the coach and really challenged Donovan to get in shape and become a better player. Donovan became an all-conference player and went on to play in the pros a little bit. Richard. And a travel. Yeah, he lifted his pivot foot. John Hampton with the call. We got the Doris Burke Classic. Since Doris played at Providence the same time as Billy Donovan, yep. she used to babysit for Rick Pitino's <laughs> kids. And his son now is a student and coaching down at Providence. Pretty, but it's effective. And O'Bannon knocks it down. They've been on fire from the three. I want to ask Doris something. Doris, I want to ask you, did Rick Pitano, did Tito pay well when you were babysitting? <laughs> I hope he paid you well. He paid me better than I, I make at ESPN now, Dick. <laughs> Rick Pitino and Billy Donovan and Doris Burke, all part of the men's and women's basketball programs back at Providence in the mid to late 80s. And Doris, as we, we found out from Billy Donovan yesterday, he was going to transfer, then Rick Pitino basically talked him out of it. Yeah, Pro Providence was coming off in a... Providence was coming off an 11-20 season. Billy Donovan was not playing much, guys. He knew Tom Komchowski and your guy, Howie Garfinkel. He was trying to transfer to a lower Division I school. Rick Pitino said, listen, change your body. Do everything I tell you. It'll be the greatest experience of your life. Of course, guys, he went on to become a member of that old Final Four team. And the thing that I think most people don't know, he was ready to go to Wall Street. Rick convinced him to get into coaching. He joined him at Kentucky, and the rest is history, guys. All right, Doris, thank you. Garcia stumbles and turns it over. So Billy Donovan really indebted to Rick Pitino in what he did for his career. Yeah, he was going to go to Wall Street, Doris said. Now he's got so much cash, he needs Wall Street. <laughs> That's the great thing working for Jeremy Foley. He takes care of his coaches. If he believes that they can be effective, he will take care of them. Maybe I could call Urban Myron for a loan. <laughs> First appearance of the day for Lee Humphrey, a 6'2 sophomore out of Maryville, Tennessee for Florida. Again, Billy Donovan, a very deep team. He'll play 10 of 11. Here's Humphrey. He's a shooter. Rebound Walsh, who's already got six points today. Roberson open for three. They got to get Roberson some looks. He really does that great stroke like Dean. He can stroke it. I really believe, as you look right here, with Louisville with the lead, the edge goes to Florida. He plus in a tempo of the game, the pace of the game. I love these running reptiles. They're phenomenal here. Well, there's more great college basketball action coming your way on ES. Watching those big three. I think two rising stars, and I mean big stars in coaching, Bill Self and Paul Hewitt to me, in the next 10 years, I'm going to put numbers on that I are going to be you. really outstanding. They are two sensational coaches, and celebrate your New Year's Day with us. We'll be in Lawrence, Kansas, as Dick mentioned. 2.30 Eastern, Kansas and Georgia Tech. What a game that should be. What makes a great coach? The ability, one, to recruit, two, to communicate, three, to motivate, four, to teach. Jenkins dumps it down and the finish by Ellis Miles. What a difference he makes for them on Ellis the interior. Miles. Well, he gives them post presence, something they didn't have last year. They were strictly a perimeter team. There's that 2-2-1 two, two, press. And it's, all it is is trying to take you out of a rhythm. That's all they want to do, take you out of a little rhythm. And they got a 10-second call right there. So Louisville takes over. Florida couldn't get it over in time. Look at a smile in Mr. Patino. We're going to see that like penetration. Draw two people and dump down. See right here? Now he's going to dump it right down to the open guy. Draw two. 
dump it down. The key there is being in a right place. Miles in a perfect place on the floor to make that effective. A great offensive start for Louisville, leading 27 to 21 here on the road in Gainesville. Jenkins from the corner. And the rebound by David Lee, who's taken about 10 pounds off it. He bulked up last year, regretted it, and now he's leaner and quicker this year. They he's a senior him, now. They gotta get him some touches inside. Get it inside to him. Walsh steps in. Short on the mid-range jumper. Loose ball Cardinals. Numbers Louisville. Miles to Garcia. Garcia to Dean. And they can't get the shot off as Florida recovers. Now Garcia forces it up from the corner. Great job defensively, though, by Florida yep. to recognize Dean, the shooter, and to attack him. That's going to help and recover. Can't allow him to have some open looks. Still a great up and down pace. And as Dick mentioned, Florida's got far superior depth. And Billy Donovan hoping to wear down the Cardinals by the end of the game. Oh, boy. That's a tough, hard foul. Alice Miles crashing into David Lee, who gets up and will head to the line. Last year, Miles suffered that knee injury, put him out for the season against Marquette. That was a great game. Good sportsman, who said fair by Miles going over to Lee and saying, I didn't mean to do that. Travis Diener, by the way, has been sensational. He's yeah. got a little bad ankle, but still playing great. Doesn't get a lot of notoriety. That would be a heck of a matchup tonight, Wisconsin and, and certainly and Marquette. Marquette yeah, yeah. The state of Wisconsin, I mean, you compare basketball now there to what it was some years ago, I mean, it's going back a while, but the player getting better and better players at Wisconsin and between Marquette and Wisconsin, most of them are staying there. Those are two great programs. Wisconsin has won or shared the Big Ten regular season three years title. in a row. Each of the last three years. Yeah. How about that? And uh, most people don't know the name, Bo Ryan. Yeah. His name is Bo Ryan. And of course, Tom Crean took Marquette to a Final Four. Dick Bennett had great success in the state of Wisconsin. Humphrey to the line. Good, strong drive by him. He became a starter last year, Dick, when Christian Dreyer bolted the team with 10 games to go to sign a professional contract in Spain. Yeah, and he's really struggling out there playing in Spain. Bottom line is he left the club after 10 games. I thought that was really sad to quit on a team in a run. Billy Donovan may be a little bit more hesitant about getting international players now, but here's a guy with an international feel to him. Joe Kim Noah as David Lee comes out. Noah the son of former tennis great Yannick Noah. Noah was born in New York, but then spent about 10 years of his childhood with his family in France and then came back to New York to play high school basketball. Did you ever watch Yannick Noah play tennis? Yes, yeah, I did. I'm going to tell you, he what was so style, flat huh? oh, yeah. He had great style, yeah. personality, very charismatic. Gators getting back in this one. Louisville played so well in the first 12 minutes. They really have played as well as I think they're capable of playing on a road and playing so shorthanded. Nearly a steal by Green. Aaron Johnson into the game, number 15 for Louisville. He's a walk-on, a real energy guy for the Cardinals. Garcia high off the glass. Rebound to Jenkins. Stolen by Walsh. I'll tell you one area they have committed a lot more to on the defensive side of the ball. Making some mistakes, but at least they got the effort. Yep. Credit that a little bit to the arrival of Larry Shiat on the staff. Larry Shiat, former head coach at Clemson, yep. now a member of the coaching staff here. There's a look at Larry right here on the right. Bottom line is I think he adds a lot to that coaching staff. Walsh came up a little bit gimpy after that struggle for the ball. He did get the timeout called. A good defensive play there by Walsh. And you're right. Their defensive numbers are all vastly improved so far this year over last year. They really committed to it. Yeah, you know, the numbers are definitely a lot better. But let's be real here, too. That's not against the likes of That's Kentucky right. and That's Louisville. Right. Yeah. A lot of cupcakes thrown in there makes those numbers a little astronomical. Florida is 5-1 on the season. Their only loss was here at home to Miami of Florida. Louisville is 4-1, ranked 14. Their only loss was to a good Iowa team out in Maui. That was a great win for Frank Haight. I was shocked when they said Miami beat Florida. I said, a basketball? <laughs> I mean, that was a shock. In fact, last week, please don't tell the people in the SEC that I'll say this. They can't hear me, can no, they? No, they're not they can't listening. hear me, do they? No, 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 I'll no. whisper. I'll whisper. You know, I had a lot of sore this throat. Will be a, this will be a change. Yeah. I had a sore throat yeah. last month and all. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to work through that, but yeah. the Bottom line is, let me tell you this, you're still lifting. The SEC was 1-10 last weekend.
One in ten. Their only win was Alabama over Charlotte yep. in triple overtime. They lost. You can understand North Carolina beating the likes of Kentucky and Illinois beating Arkansas. But Wofford beating Auburn, Chattanooga a rough day. beating Tennessee, a rough day. Miami beating Florida in Florida, right here in, in Gainesville. Yep. A great win for Frank Haight and his kids. Harrison Haight played well. 27-23, Louisville leaving Florida on the road. Great atmosphere here for the Gainesville. When we come back, what a difference a year makes defensively for the Gators. You can see now putting up huge numbers professionally. Billy Donovan loves what Corey Brewer. He can be a defensive game changer. He gives them a real spark at the defensive end. One of the reasons, along with Larry Scheid coming on to the coaching staff, Florida's a better defensive team well, this year. You know, Brewer was a big-time scorer in high school, and he's sacrificing that because he wants to add in that dimension on the defensive side. Obannon being defended way out on the perimeter by Lee. There's that mismatch you talked about because Louisville now has to go small. Palacio still sitting with the two fouls. Trying to spread the court. Did a great job spreading the court. Waving the goal off. Yeah, waving it off. Stepped out Lee. of bounds before. What well, it was a terrific elevation there by O'Bannon taking advantage of that mismatch. You know, you think about Patino versus Donovan, some other recent matchups, Coach K versus Tommy Amica, Coach K versus Quinn Snyder, Bobby Knight and Steve Wolford, Bay Hyman, Louis Orr. Donovan with the jacket off as always, working up a sweat over in that Florida sideline. They've won 20 games or more and been to the NCAA tournament six consecutive years. These are good times if you're a Gator basketball fan and if you're a Cardinal fan, well, you got to be excited knowing that they got a great class coming in next year. Brian Johnson is injured now. David Padgett David sitting Padgett, out. Right, the transfer. From out of Kansas. I could never understand him leaving Kansas. Great job getting it inside. And Lee is fouled. Lee and Walsh have both been very aggressive driving the ball into the paint on the Cardinals. So what might have been for Louisville, as we started to say, well, they've got some injuries right now. Brian Johnson out with a knee injury. He's going to miss the whole season. And how about if Sebastian Telfer and Dante Smith, they originally committed to come to Louisville? Well, you know, really hurt him. Bottom line is he committed to Telfer instead of Rondo. Rondo now play Rajon Rondo At playing Kentucky. for Kentucky. Yeah. Outstanding guard. He would have been in that Louisville uniform. I don't think Rick could have done it over, but obviously, uh, hindsight, he was a big fan of Telfair. But he told the kid, if you can get drafted very high, be a lottery selection, or be in the top part of the first round, I don't blame you going and getting that cash. He's very honest with him. Speaking of Kentucky, one week from today. Yeah, we home. can't wait. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. That's one of the great rivalries. The Cats in the cards, noon Eastern next Saturday here on ESPN. That Kentucky's on their home floor this afternoon against Indiana. I freed them all. Now Horford way out on the perimeter is called for the foul. You know, Dan, you mentioned earlier Louisville's recruiting class. Some people rated as the best class in America, led by Amir Johnson coming in at 6'9", Andre McKee, Brian Harvey, Terrence Williams from out of Seattle, a tremendous leaper. They got a terrific class. You add Padgett to that mix, Brian Johnson to that mix. I think next year team, yeah. is the big-time year for Rick Pitino. I think they're good this year. They'll cause problems, but I look at this club, sweet 16 potential. Horford sits down with his second foul. Noah returns. O'Bannon nails another three. The sixth three of the first half for Louisville. Two for O'Bannon, two for Dean, two for Garcia. Against Stetson, Florida knocked down eight consecutive threes at one yep. time in a game, but this is not Stetson right no. now, baby. It's been an up and down affair. Dean, another one. This one will rim out on him. The rebound for Torian Green. Miles down behind the play. Five on four Gators right Get now. Get it inside the yep, lane. Bring it, it to Lee. Yes, sir. Bring the ball inside. Got a big size mismatch. Got to take advantage of his ability around the basket. And the only big guy, Miles, got knocked down at the other end. So it was five on four, and all four guys are little guys. Got to bring it inside. Look at him right open, number 24. He wants the rock from out of St. Louis, where the final four will be this year. Great city for baseball, they tell me. I've been oh. there to see the cards You've never play. been to a baseball game there? No, I haven't oh, seen the dear. cards play. Oh, you've got to. Tony La Russa's got to help me out, give me some tickets. <laughs> so the basket for Lee, and then a foul off the ball. Well, I'll get some tickets for sure now. Hal McRae's the batting coach there, and he's a buddy of mine. That's right. He used to play tennis with Hal That's McRae. Right. A foul off the ball after the basket is going to send Joe Kim Noah to the line, it looks like, because Lee scored the basket. Ball goes inside. There's Noah trying to block out. Oh, he gets yeah, pushed. Yeah. He gets shoved. 
He gets shoved. Yeah, O'Bannon gets called for the foul, and now Noah goes to the line for one and one. One and one, guys. One and one. And O'Bannon sits down with his second foul. So Juan Palacio sat down early with two. Now O'Bannon sits down with two, raising the front rim, and that's it is Noah. Yeah, he really didn't get enough arc. You know, the bottom line is quick steal. This is Brewer. He can jump. Oh, no. Up, up, and away. The Robbie Ruptiles go bananas. Corey Brewer. Remember that name. He's a diaper dandy. Dick, he's averaging two and a half steals per game. 6'8", a huge wingspan. Great anticipation. And almost every time he comes up with a steal, it's a dunk at the other end. Well, he takes pride of playing on the defensive side. Lorenzo Wade into the game for the Cardinals. Freshman out of Las Vegas. He misses a three. Roberson. Lorenzo Wade, very athletic. Three on one. Nice pass. Right catch by Jenkins, too. They do a great job in transition. They run a lot of transition drills. Three on two, two on one. Well, it's been a fun first half, hasn't it? Yeah, a lot of exciting plays. Rick Pitino, if you can define getting the most out of your people, that's what he's doing here this yep. afternoon. He is getting maximum out of his talent, and that's all a coach can really do. They're going to lay off Noah, double team on Lee, back to Noah, and a foul. Great job by Noah. Again, you talked about it earlier with the other end, for the big guy to fill the open space. Well, he filled the open space, got down the gap, went down to the gut of the defense, but also great passing by yes. Lee to recognize the double up. As soon as the double team came, he was already looking for Noah to make the cut. And Lee, known for his passing, it's one of his best skills, so Noah who almost shot an air ball in a free throw moments ago. We'll try it again. This time he's got two shots coming. The last foul was on Brandon Jenkins, his second. And it looks like he's going to come out now. Noah knocks down the first. Jenkins will come out. And Brad Giannini, number 12, a former walk-on, is going to come into the game. Just earned a scholarship this year. He played really well against Iowa, especially in the first half, and they were only lost. Hey, Iowa and Steve Wolford. I'm going to tell you, they're NCAA bound this year. I really believe that. Watch some of them. Adam Haluska. There's oh, Yannick there's Noah. God. There yes, he is. Sir. Come on, Yannick. Let's see that forehand. Let's see that backhand. <laughs> Let's see that serve. Let's see that athleticism. He's a musician that now. Makes true. music, baby. Turn his talents to music. Boy, what flair he had on the tennis court. Gators back within one. Good double up on a basketball. Dean on the drive, nice kick, Wade in the corner. Another three, and again, it all started with great penetration. It also becomes contagious. One guy knocks it down, Giannini. I tell you, I like that name. I like that name. <laughs> that is Wade's first three in a Louisville uniform, and that's quieted the reptiles a little bit. That three would have gotten them all back noisy again, but it rattles out on Walsh. Dean all the way, stripped. No shot there. One against three. He's got to be smarter than that. He's got a better basketball IQ than that. Comes out of Neptune High School. Brewer and, Brewer and Roberson both had their hands in on that. You know, he's the second most famous guy from Neptune. He's the most one. famous? Jack Nicholson, the actor. <laughs> That's what Big Jack's from, a basketball Bob lover. Jack. Time out on the floor here in Gainesville. Louisville has led throughout, but Florida's nipping at their heels right now. A good one between the Cardinals and Gators here with the Odo. Got to put it on the floor and attack that pressure. Dick Vitale will tell you that. He would have been coach of the year 20 years ago coaching a guy like me. Gentlemen, back to you. Fellas, thank you. It is so loud here, we could not even hear Dave and Jay in the studio. The only word I heard was hairline, so I think we took a shot. Oh, wow. Did Jay do that to us? I thought I said some I kind words Repsin. about him. I think it was Repson. Oh, was Dave? Yeah, I think well, it was I'll tell you what, I was ready to praise him on the game he had the other night with Mass and Connecticut. Great win for Steve Lapis. Kid Freeman makes a big wow. basket, and then he ran to the crowd. That's to right. Celebrate. Four seconds left yeah, in the game. He forgot that he had to guard somebody. Yeah. Well, that was a great win for Steve Lapis, who's in a must-win situation. That was a fantastic finish that night up in Amherst. Well, tonight, here on ESPN, one man, one sport, one nation. Three starring Barry Pepper as Dale Earnhardt, represented by K. Jewelers. Premieres tonight at 9 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN HD. He did a phenomenal job in 61 he when did. he played Roger Maris. Yeah. 
He's one of those guys, whatever he's in, you want to make sure you see it. He's terrific. I got a chance to spend some time with him out in L.A. down there to celebrate the 25th anniversary for ESPN, speaking to the TV critics, and he was there. And what a nice guy. Is he a college hoops fan? He's a great guy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think he knew who I was. <laughs> like I said, look, what do you do? I said, I work for ESPN. Well, what do you do for ESPN? I'm a TV basketball analyst. You oh, know, really? No, I'm only kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Louisville up by four here on the road in Gainesville. Garcia got in the air and was very lucky to find Miles with that pass. It sort of cooled off Garcia after yeah. the great start he had. He's been stuck on eight points for a while, as has his buddy Taekwon Dean. Well, they've tried to tighten up on those people. I mean, some other people got to step up now. Humphrey with a rebound. Florida can cut into that lead a little bit more. Get Lee a touch inside. Go inside, outside. Take advantage of your guys that can shoot from the perimeter, but you start it on the interior. Ross back into the game for Florida. He's got a size advantage on his man, Wade. Get some touches to the big guy. Too much playing with the ball on a perimeter. Chris Curran, a sophomore, guarding the ball right now. Another former walk-on has checked in. So Rick Pitino has put in just about everybody that he's got, and he doesn't have that many guys. Well, he's got his three sons in town. Maybe he can play some of them. <laughs> you know what he should do? He should put some of his coaches into the game. He's got some talent on the sitting over there in suits right now. Huh? Well, you're talking about Reggie Theus, man. That's a yeah. big-time talent. He could shoot the three, but the guys Louisville has right now, they can shoot it as well. Dean, Garcia, and O'Bannon have all been hot from the perimeter. Former Dukey Vince Taylor can shoot it as well, yep. yeah. They're living with the three, and that's what he did when he was a Providence and Kentucky until he got all the talent that he wanted. Look at Reggie. As you look at Reggie right now, let look me at just younger tell you this. Year. I was teasing him, right? He was trying to guard me. I said, you can't guard me. You've <laughs> never guarded anybody. <laughs> right? Did I tease him? Yes, you did. But when he had the ball in his hands, he knew what to do with it, didn't oh, he? Yeah. Yeah. Here's Green from the wing. Lee elevates for the rebound. It's out of bounds to stay with Florida. Great effort between a couple of Cardinals by David Lee. Reggie's a pretty good-looking guy, too. I wish I had half his oh, yeah. looks. <laughs> There's Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor. Score too. Yes, sir. It was a big time. I went to Duke. We got Dukies all over. Jay Billis right here. Mr. Taylor. Florida retains possession. Torrey and Green will inbound it for the Gators. Louisville won last year. This sounds like it's going to be the end of this rivalry. Louisville moving into the Big East next year. That's it's what sound like it's there's over. Room. Yeah, there's no it's more. It's over. I'm telling you now, it's over. Folks, I think Dick thinks it's over. <laughs> you know why it's over? I talked to Rick Pitini. He said, we can't play him anymore. He said, I got the Big East next year. We got yeah. all kinds of games there. Walsh struggles out of that double team, wants the ball back from Moss, who's desperately looking for a ball handler. Plenty of time on the shot clock, still at 15. Go to the basket, Lee, go to the basket. He can hold Go to the basket. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There you go, Coach Vitale. Why don't they listen once in a while? Why don't they listen? Ellis Mr. Miles' Lee. shoe has come off, and we're going to have to stop the play here, which will give us another chance to look at David Lee doing what Dickie B told him to do. Why don't he go to the basket more often? I don't know why he doesn't want the ball. They release right down the gut. I mean, look at his gut. It's wide open. You can put a truck through there. Get a truck through there. I mean, are you kidding me? A running back would love to have that. You know, Dick, he said with the 10 pounds he's taken off, he feels he has a quicker first step. I think Great I stuff. I tell you, look like the guy running for Oklahoma, Mr. Peterson, who's in a candidate for the, for the Heisman. Heisman tonight. That's right. For more on the senior from St. Louis, let's go back to Doris. Dan, we've spent much of this year talking about guys trying to bulk up. It was the exact opposite for David Lee. He went from 12% to 7% body fat. He said, I just played a ton of basketball, like a lot of other guys. That Jordan camp, he actually played against Jordan. He said, I beat him in a game to three. I don't know if he's blindfolded or not, guys. Hey, Doris, let me tell you, everywhere I go, all these guys went to Jordan's camp, and they all played Jordan, and they all beat Jordan. He's about the 30th guy that I heard beat Jordan. I like to see him play him for real. Ain't no way. I don't care what Jordan's age is. A big day for David Lee, and he's got the Gators back within two. Louisville has led the entire game. A travel to call on Wade, and now Florida can tie it or maybe take the lead this trip. If they take the lead, certainly momentum's got to be on their side. We talked about even when they were at eight down that they would have the edge with the tempo and the pace of yep. this game. You know, you look at their big three, Roberson, Lee, and Walsh. Outstanding. And I think the best threesomes in America, number one and two, are North Carolina's number th trio, number one, and Kansas, number yep. two. Talk about May and certainly... Roberson, no. 
Yeah, Miles and Simeon and oh, Langford in Kansas and McCain should have been in May of Carolina, both outstanding. You know, everybody always complain about Mr. McCants. I know a lot of people wish they had Mr. McCants playing for him. Just ask Tubby Smith when he had to face him in that first half. He put 20 on the board against Tubby Kentucky. Kentucky. Coming up on the UPS Halftime Report, back to Dave Revson and Jay Billis. Jay's going to talk about some big men around the country, and we'll look in on other games going on today. There are some doozies. Coming up today, Kentucky's playing Indiana. Don't forget, after us right here on ESPN, 2 o'clock Eastern, number one Illinois taking on Oregon at the United Center. You know, Jay knows a little about big man. When he played at Duke, he was a member of my old support team. That's right. One of those role players, <laughs> man. Very important. Garcia handling, being defended by Walsh. Now a switch and Moss is on him. Done a great job trying to minimize him getting shots. But what a great look. Aaron Johnson with a bucket, but all of that created by Garcia. Yeah, you and I could have made that layup, not to take anything away from Johnson, but that was definitely the innovative and creative yep. ability of Mr. Garcia. What a, does any player in America combine his shot and his handle? He can do it all. Lee trying to do it all with the right hand won't finish, That's but smart. he'll go to the line. Lee's a natural lefty, but he's very good with his offhand. Yeah, he can utilize either hand. Take a look at Garcia. Little shake and bake. New York City draws three people to him. I thought they're going to call that carry. I thought they're going to call that this year. I know. We don't hear more that carry. whistle at all. No question. Well, he's getting ready for the next level. Hey, Florida. <laughs> Florida staying in the state until January 12th. They go to Orbo. He's adopted the Jim Beheim theory of scheduling. That's becoming contagious because our buddy Bill Self is doing that That's up right. in That's Kansas right. as well. Why leave the state? He says, are you kidding me? He said, all the tourists, they all want to come down to Florida. So why should I leave Florida? He goes, why should I leave? He's got a point. Exactly. Even you, you like to come to Florida. Oh, I love Florida. I know. You got that house <laughs> you're building near me. Wow. Lee, Lee misses a couple. Not that close, Dick. Don't get excited. <laughs> Different neighborhood. Garcia, short on the three to win the first half. Competitive, hard fought, exciting 37 33. Louisville, in spite of a terrific performance, those last two free throws notwithstanding, by David Lee. A big first half for him, Dick, to keep the Gators in the game. Well, keeping them in the game, but you got to salute. Certainly, as you watch Lee on the inside, salute Rick Petito for getting the maximum out of his players. I thought he did a great job having them ready here this afternoon. Let's go to Coach Rick Petito standing by with Doris Burke. Rick, you shot a great percentage, but with limited depth, how do you sustain that in the second half? Well, we're a little tired and we're in foul trouble. We're playing combinations that we're really not sure of our offense, but we're making the best of it. Our guys are doing a tremendous job. David Lee, a solid per first half. Any adjustments on him defensively? Well, well we're, they're running a pick and roll, and we're closing out. We blew our shoe nothing can happen with that uh, but everything everything else is going our way we just got to control a 2 2 1 and make sure they don't get too many fast breaks all right Rick thanks good luck Dan. all right Doris thank you very much great job come on back for the second half folks we got a good one road between the Cardinals and Gators but first the UPS halftime show Dave Revson Jay Billis guys Dan, thank you very much. Rebounded, didn't shoot a free throw the whole first half, and they're winning the game. Well, that's because the three-point shot has revolutionized the game of basketball and have taken advantage of the trifecta. They've lived by the three, they've made seven big threes, and that's been a major, major factor here. And it was Francisco Garcia, Taekwon Dean, Larry O'Bannon, each with a couple of threes. And it was always set up, Dick, by a great pass or some great penetration and then a kick out. And also the presence on the floor of Garcia. Yep. Even though he didn't score early, I mean, he did score early, he didn't score late. What a bottom line is he got open and Lee inside when they got him the basketball was very effective. Right here, that's big, man. They haven't been to the line, as you said, Dan. They got 0-0, zero, zero, man. Louisville trying to pull off a big road win here down in Gainesville. They lead by four. Florida has never led in this game. You know, it doesn't shock you, though, not getting to the free throw line because they're really empty in the post other than miles, and everything they're doing is shooting the perimeter shots, so you're not going to get opportunities unless you drive, you're aggressive, and you attack the basket. Double the Cardinals start the second half with two fouls. Nobody in the game has three. Juan Palacios, number three for Louisville, back into the game. Now a steal by Garcia as he picks Brewer's pocket and finishes strong. Brewer had no shot in that matchup. He was absolutely lost with the rock in his hands. And Garcia put the veteran's ability on him, his experience, and took advantage of it. Ten points now for Garcia, his first bucket since about four and a half minutes in. Nice jumper there by Roberson. Well, I'll tell you one thing, if Florida's going to get out of here with a W, Roberson and Walsh are going to have to step up. They have to really step up. Your star players can't be mediocre in games like this. 
Knocked away by Lee. It's going to go out of bounds to Florida. Florida basketball. Take a look right here. He's got no shot. Those long arms. His handle's not at this level. It's not high school. He said, hey, Diaper <laughs> Dandy, you may play defense, but don't put that offense on me. I could hear him just saying that. You think they yeah. talk like that? Uh, a little bit different. No. Not, not quite in Vitalese. But, <laughs> but I bet you Garcia talks a little bit out there. You can see him. I don't want to talk Vitalese. You know. Walsh looking for Moss inside. Miles on his back. The double team, the pass to Lee, and the foul is on the floor. Try no to go, basket. Try to make that interior pass. Let's uh, get some thoughts on adjustments these teams will make in the second half. Here's Doris Burke. Doris? Well, late in that first half, Billy Donovan thought they did a better job with transition defense and contending with the three against the zone. He said our key is to continue to move the basketball. He said, hey, we had shots. We just didn't make them, guys. I'll tell you one thing, Doris. Transition defense is essential against Louisville, but not so much for the layup. you got to play transition defense on their three-point shooters. Yep. you got to fan out. Most kids like to retreat defensively into the three-second area. You got to extend and get out of the shooters. Roberson a little bit short. And now this one's going to go against the Gators. Looks like Adrian Moss has picked up the foul. Just prior to that, Francisco Garcia with a block shot. He's doing a little bit of everything here today. This game is obviously, I think, more important psychologically to the home team, to Florida. They need a win over a competitive big time program to be able to feel good about themselves. Just a week ago, lost here at home to Miami of Florida, came back and routed Stetson during the week. They beat Providence, but remember, that's when Providence played at the NIT on Friday night in New York and then flew down here for a late afternoon game Saturday, so the Friars obviously weren't 100%. So Billy Donovan says we're still trying to figure out just exactly how good we are. Exactly. In that win, they certainly had an edge with them having to travel and play less than 24 hours later, and that was certainly a big plus for Florida. Look at Billy Donovan. We talked about expectations. He's been the creator of his own dilemma here because he's created so much success. And with that success comes people want to get better and better every year. Last year, they got beaten the first round by Manhattan. Bobby Gonzalez's kids beat him in the NCAA. But that was, that was the matchup nobody wanted in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Everybody knew how good that Manhattan team was. Bobby Gonzalez has done a sensational job there. Well, I think Bobby Gonzalez would be a great potential choice if he wanted to go to the West Coast for that job at USC, even though I have a dilemma with coaches getting fired right. after four games. I think that is a bad bad item to establish on a collegiate level. That's almost like the NBA and Major League Baseball you expect it. But in college today, I tell you, you can't expect anything when you see guys like Tyrone Willingham fired and Ron Zook. And it's all about win, win, and win big. And it's the greed of so many alums who want to be Charlie Toon, a big fish on campuses, and they want to bug the president. Hey, he didn't win enough games. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. I'm not writing out the check. And unfortunately, some of the presidents lift, listen to their alums. Hey, look at what Billy Donovan's done here. And yes, the, a little pressure maybe because the expectations have gone up, but he's taken them to the national championship game, six consecutive NCAA tournaments. How many coaches can say that? Well, I'll tell you what, I think Jeremy Foley loves them, and I don't blame him. Garcia is fouled by Corey Brewer. Garcia just showing some all-round ability, as good as, as Brewer is, he's still a freshman, and they're really having trouble containing Garcia. Well, Garcia, a lot of people are going to have tough trouble containing him, Dan. He's so versatile. He can shoot the medium-range shot, the long-range shot. He can handle. He defends. Very active. You know, it says a lot about how Billy Donovan feels about Brewer, that he's got him on Garcia, but even he can't slow him down. Who got this foul? I got a big kick out of Billy Donovan before the game telling us about the speech of Rick Pitino to his players. He said, trust me, I've heard that speech lots of times. It's going to be us against the world today. We don't have enough players. We're hurt. He said, they're going to be so pumped up as Moss goes out. Sits down with his third. Al Horford is back into the game for Florida. Torian Green is on the floor as well. Lee Humphrey is in the game. So Billy Donovan doesn't like some of the things he's seeing here early, making a lot of subs. Miles with the elbow. Good Offensive call by foul. Tony Green. Yep. Offensive foul called by Tony Green. You're right, Dan. See, so he's going to lean in with that left arm right here. He makes that contact. Wham. Lean in. Yep. Can't do that. Can't do that. Trying to put some pressure on the freshman here, Green. Off to Brewer. He handles that ball awful high, yeah, susceptible does. to the 
steal. Nice pass, he said. Nice pass. <laughs> nice pass. Don't forget an assist. Yeah. For that. That's air ball, baby. <laughs> but Lee, Lee deserves more touches in a three-second area. Lee has 12 points on five of six shooting. He's been the best player today for Florida. He would have a heck of a lot more if he'd get more touches. Switching man to man. Garcia handling out on top. So shifty. Good kick out. O'Bannon. Garcia makes everybody else on the floor better. He really did. He created that opportunity for O'Bannon, who's a good shooter. Is that pressure? 2-2-1. Two, two, oh, and Garcia with a steal. Now he's got the trailer. Give it up. Dean with the left hand. What a nice play. Garcia. It's the Garcia show, baby. New York City style. Another steal. Another and steal. And he got the timeout called. What wow. A play. Hey, take that, Sweekins. The last minute. I mean, get film of that. That's an All-American film right there. Garcia defending offense, just creating opportunities, passing the ball. Sensational. He is the whole pageant, package. And Rick Pitino says, even though Garcia does it, Rick Pitino says, book it. Wow. He has gone to the NBA after this year. He is clearly the best player on the floor here today. Nice look. Well, as good as Francisco Garcia was in the first half, he has been even better here in the first three and a half minutes of the second half and doing everything, Dick. When you look at his line, Francisco Garcia is in double figures in scoring already. He has all four steals that Louisville has. He has the only block that Louisville has. Four assists, five rebounds. He's a superstar. I'll tell you one thing, he's stuffing that stat sheet, and he'll make great, great a run for post-year post honors. Misses that jumper. Walsh defending him, and now it'll go back over to the Gators. Remember, last year when they played this game, it was just four days after Garcia's brother had been killed, and Garcia played very well under very difficult circumstances in a win over Florida at Freedom Hall. He had a lot of help from a lot of his friends, the coaches, a lot of support. Horford. Inside out. See, good yeah. inside out. Walsh misses the open that. three. Horford, good hustle. Got to make that open shot. It looks like he shot put that. Didn't have that good release. Nine-point lead for the Cardinals in a game in which the Gators have never led. And now Tyquan Dean can't keep up with Torian Green, so he is called for the foul. I tell you, Tom George has done a great job as an AD at Louisville with the hiring of Patino, Bobby Petrino, Patino, Petrino. Petrino. Again, oh, the Paisans! Friends, as these two teams met at the time, Florida was ranked number one in the nation, although they had just lost to Maryland. They lost to Louisville by eight. Again, just four days after Francisco Garcia's brother was murdered, he played in the game, played extremely well under exceedingly difficult circumstances that we can only imagine, and helped lead Louisville to a win. He did have some family support, if you will, within the Louisville basketball program, and for that story, here's Doris. For a lot of these guys, teammates become surrogate family members Taekwon Dean and Francisco Garcia inseparable you do not see one without the other on campus and Dean's message to Garcia you have lost one brother but you've gained another I'm here for you that's a terrific message and you can imagine what that meant at the time to Francisco Garcia they were really really tight and he's still a very very tight both from the east one from New Jersey one from New York lost to Walsh Horford with a rebound and one Nice offensive rebound by Horford. His dad was a big-time star on the scholastic level. Tito Horford played in the NBA. Going to watch him work on a glass. There's the defense. Comes over, rotates on Walsh. Horford stays with it, takes it up in traffic right at Garcia. Second foul on Garcia. First bucket of the game for Al Horford. I tell you, that Patino Petrino combination is starting to form. One of the best football basketball yeah, combinations is. in America. Yep. Missed the free throw, another rebound for Garcia. Keep in mind, too, that Garcia, he's been handling the ball a lot, but he's also had to play the power forward spot a lot because Palacios missed most of the first half of foul well, trouble. They're doing a lot of mismatching yeah. right now. What they're doing is mix and match. Walsh with a steal for the Gators. Florida needs a bucket here. Green for three. And the rebound to Taekwon Dean. That would have been a big one for Florida. Right now, I try to get Dean some shots and looks. Torian Green with a push. They want the carry. They want the carry. No call. 
I look at Rick Pitino working that sideline, the maestro man, an entrepreneur, a man with a lot of generosity, he gave us $50,000 for the Jimmy V Fighter. Right. In fact, Bob Valvano, I'm touching him right now. Bob <laughs> Valvano's right to my right doing color in he's, Louisville. He's trying to do a game and you're uh, punching the man I, in the arm. I will tell you this. We are so proud to learn, I learned yesterday, that the unbelievable donations coming in were unbelievable in terms of people after our game. On Jimmy Tuesday, B Classic. Humphrey misses the left-hand layup. Well, tell us a little bit about some of the, the donation. Nick Valvano, Jim and Bob's brother, is uh, really in charge of the foundation. What do you Well, Nick us? is the president that yeah. does a great job. I can tell you this, anybody that still wants to join us, 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. Make a donation. You may be saving someone's life that you love with the research that's going on. There's Bobby, Bobby Valvano. He's doing the game with Paul Rogers. Well, a nice team out there. Also Louisville. a host on uh, ESPN Radio as well. Garcia misses the three. Good rebound by Palacios. Juan Diego Tejo Palacios, a freshman that Rick Pitino is very excited about. He's out of Columbia. Palacios is a kid with a great body, runs really well, has to really work on the offensive side. And his coaches will work with him in those areas. He's got some good offensive experts on that sideline with Theus and Taylor. They switch on the screen. That puts Moss wow. on Garcia, and he wow. banks it in. He banks it. He banks it. I thought the banks were closed on Saturday. <laughs> I thought they were closed. A dozen now for Garcia. As soon as Walsh and Moss switched, that foul's going to go against Florida. Green a little bit out of control. As soon as they switched and Moss was on Garcia, you could see his eyes light up that, hey, yeah, I got a big guy on me now. He's got no shot. The little fadeaway J. Wow. You think he planned it that way? You think he planned it that way? I mean, he's got it all going today. When you're that good, you don't have to plan it. It just happens. Florida really has disappointed me from the standpoint they don't seem to have a rhythm at all offensively. Lee has returned to the game. Maybe that will help. Lee Walsh and Roberson are all in there right now, along with Horford and Humphrey. They've got 11 players Billy Donovan is using, but they just, like you say, they haven't been in a rhythm, and usually offense is the best part of their game. Yeah, they really have not been in a rhythm offensively at all. And I credit that a lot to the defensive changes by Rick Pitino. Garcia, again, the penetration in the dish, gets it back, he and fouled. he's going to shoot three. And Walsh thinks that was a bit of an acting job by Francisco Garcia. I'll tell you, they're going to get a little bit more emotional on that floor right now, Florida. Game of basketball is playing with a lot of emotion, a lot of passion. And they're going to start feeling it off this crowd. This crowd is electric. Oh, uh, you know what? Walsh is right. Garcia stuck his right leg out. Garcia initiated the contact. Garcia fell down, and Garcia got the call. Walsh has a beat. But you know what? It's a smart play by Garcia. I thought he made contact up on top. Did you? Yeah, I, did. I thought he made contact yeah. up on top. They're starting to let this get a little away now, Florida. They're going to spread in that gap. There's the kickback. He does get the leg out. There ain't no doubt about that. Well, we're not the only ones here watching Garcia with a lot of interest. Doris Burke's going to tell us who else is in the house. Well, I'm sure the 11 NBA scouts who just watched that play said, hey, that's a heads-up play. Force the official to make the call. Rick Pitino has made it very clear, guys. Garcia is gone after this is junior season. And Dick, he comes from very limited socioeconomic circumstances. He's looking forward to moving on. Yeah, I really believe after his three years in school, the kid is ready. And you said really well, Doris, that he really, the money is going to be too good for him to pass up. Walsh baseline drive, and Miles reaches around and pokes it out of bounds. Louisville making all the hustle plays right now. They're out hustling, they're out scrapping, they play with a lot more emotion, a lot more passion. There's more feeling, and I don't understand it because this crowd is alive. This crowd is really trying. To... Walsh will be, go looking for the three-point play, and we've got an injured Cardinal. Larry O'Bannon is wow. down. They can't afford any injuries at all. They're so short right now. That bench is so thin for Louisville. That was a nice drive by Wall. She's just got to come up a little more consistent. There he is down to gun of the defense. Takes it up, hangs, lays it on the glass, gets the conversion and the foul. Walsh now with eight. Last year, Louisville got beat by Xavier in the first round of the tournament. There's O'Bannon. Oh, he ran knee to knee, it looked like, or certainly leg to leg into David Lee out of the perimeter. 
but appears to be okay. He's going to stay in the game. Never forget Denny Crum winning those championships in 1980 and 86. Great team. 80 with the doctors at Dunk. Denny did a phenomenal job. Hall of Famer. 86, never nervous, purpose. Ellis said. Shocked America winning the national title. One man, one sport, one nation. Three, starring Barry Pepper as Dale Earnhardt. Three, presented by K Jewelers Premiers tonight at 9 Eastern right here on ESPN and it's spectacular ESPN HD hey please don't tell I know Jay can't hear me now Jay went for something to eat please don't tell Jay that I said they lost in the finals in 86 oh that's With right Abaca Dawkins Ferry King Henderson Allery Mike Krzyzewski's first final four wow. team right what a basketball IQ on that team another steal by Garcia and then Walsh gets it right back Roberson got to hit a three, takes it to the goal, dumps it off. And Lee converts. He said, wow, I'll give it to my buddy. I smell a little spurt coming out of my Florida. I smell a little spurt coming out of my Florida. I think you're going to see a gator run here. This crowd is not going to let them fold the tent. These fans are phenomenal. Roberson with some great penetration. A little shake and bake, a little dump down. Lee gets the easy layup. No defense at all on a baseline. This place is alive and well. College hoops, baby. And it'll explode when Mr. Meyer has that football team rolling over next year. And hey, they've got uh, big high school football championships going on all day today over the Swan. You know, Rick had a great line. He talked to Rick Pitino. He said when he spoke to Jim Valvano years ago, Jimmy was going to take the next job. And then finally said, no, I'm staying at NC State. He said, why? He said, why? You never mess with happiness. Yep. And he said, I messed with happiness when I left. When I left Kentucky to take the money with the Celtics, he said, I should have stayed at Kentucky. That I had the greatest job going. Fortunate for him, he's got a great job now at Louisville. Here's the quote you were talking about. I made a big mistake in my life. I thought I needed a new challenge. I never should have left. I didn't know what that, but hindsight is great. And he's learned, and yeah. he's going to be a college coach the rest of his career. Never mess with happiness, yeah. people out there. Quote from the late Jimmy Valvano life that other coaches never had i mean they just had they come up with statements that you just said what wow and they were true yeah a quick 5-0 little spurt here by the gators and they've got possession again they have never led in this game get lee some touches inside and go maybe inside outside yeah, mismatch lee. right now now they switch back He's nope. got to be a little active. See, his problem is he's not active enough offensively. He stands a little too much. And the easiest guy to guard is the guy that stands. Now, release. Take it. Wants to take it off the dribble. Gets a block. A block on Juan Palacios. And that will be his third. We're here with the O-Dome, the O'Connell Center in Gainesville, Florida, along with Dick Vitale and Doris Burke. I'm Dan Schulman, the 14th-ranked Cardinals, trying to win on a tough road spot here at Gainesville, leading Florida by seven florida is not ranked fell out of the rankings after their loss a week ago here to miami of florida louisville won by eight at freedom hall last year and louisville would dearly love to get a big win here today they've got another big one coming up a week from today on espn at home against kentucky we'll have that one for you noon easter next saturday well here's a little trivia for you the most ncaa tournament trips kentucky with 45 ucla 36 carolina 36 but down in Kansas, 33, Indiana, 32, and Louisville, 31. Well, we said that Francisco Garcia is doing it all today. He just added sweeping, mopping the sweat off the floor to his duties. He's doing everything out there. Walsh misses a three. Lee with a rebound. Hit the underside of the rim. And Florida let a couple of great opportunities get away. A missed three and then a putback. Otherwise, they're right back in this game. They need Walsh and Robinson to make some of those trifectas. Man to man defense. Garcia. And an offensive oh. foul. You know what? Could get a little tired right now. Could be a little fatigued. Number three on Garcia. Could be a little tired right now. His legs go. You don't have that stop. A long way to go in this game. The Cardinals on the strength of their superstar trying to win here on the road. Diaper Dandy beat him to the spot. Beat him to the spot and got the charge. They dig if Florida's going to win this game. They're a big three. They got to step up and play like the stars that they've been at times over the last few years. Well, there's no question. You got 
to rely on your guys for taking it to the top. Certainly Lee, Roberson, and Walsh. But look at their numbers. Roberson and Walsh have to get some perimeter shots and knock down some threes here to get some momentum. They've had some open looks here in the second half, and the shots haven't been falling. I can't get over. I think a marvelous job that Rick Pitino has done in preparing his team for this game, playing without Otis George. I mean, that's a big-time rebounder that they need on the inside. Kids really came here, fired up, and really have performed exceptionally well. George out with a pre-stress fracture, they're calling it. Out three to four weeks, they think they'll have him back for conference play. Horford inside, and he draws the foul. Horford getting more minutes, and he's very active on the interior for the Gators. Well, nice look by Lee right there. Lee did a great job getting that ball to the inside. You know, what a great environment here, though. The venue is really jumping. To, you know, we have so many problems in sports. Steroids and baseball. We had the riot in the NBA. Yeah. But the one thing you come on college campuses, you feel the electricity, the spirit that exists right here. And the one thing about a game like this, it's not like football, which is wacky. A bad law early your season's done i mean how do you have in football that auburn doesn't play for a national title california top five in america in a holiday bowl right. i mean there should be a rule that if you're not in the top 10 and even though you win your conference you should give that up you should give it up you should have to at least be in the top 10 to be a bcs i think that is wacky tonight heisman trophy won by right. eight o'clock who do you think is gonna get it i think matt liner i think the think performance so. against notre dame just like carson palmer there's something about performance against the Irish. I think he's going to get the edge over White. Big three for Tyquan Dean, who is having a great day and came into the game, Dick, shooting 50% from beyond the arc on the season, and he's three for five today. He has got a great stroke. They've done a great job to try and minimize the number of looks he gets, Florida. You know, I'm, I'm talking from a football fan. I'm not an expert, certainly like right. Chris Fowler and Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit. But as a as an outsider, I think Leinert's performance against Notre Dame is going to get him to Heisman. Yeah. That's what they need. They need Roberson to start stepping up and making some threes. Roberson now with 11. Florida back within six as we near the midway point of the second half. Will fatigue set in for the undermanned Cardinals playing with a short bench because of injuries? I think the next four minutes are vital to Louisville. Miles pushing Lee out of the way, and Lee comes down with a rebound. And we've got a call going against Louisville, says John Clockerty. I think the next four minutes, from the 10-minute mark to the 6-minute mark, is going to be vital for Louisville. If this comes down the stretch to the last three minutes with anybody's game, yeah, you like certainly got to give the edge to the home team. Aaron Johnson, the foul for Louisville. That is his fourth. He will come out, and Brandon Jenkins will come back in. Brian Johnson, a freshman forward, out for the season with a knee injury. Otis George, a senior forward, both bruisers inside. George out for a month with a free stress fracture. So Rick Pitino has already played a walk-on and two guys who were walk-ons last year in this game today. I think it's going to be a great environment. We're down there for the Louisville-Kentucky game next week. That'll be certainly special. It's almost like, you know, you think of Duke and Carolina, Louisville, Kentucky. Duke, Carolina usually has a little bit more at stake because it's an ACC yeah. league matchup. Rick Pitino was joking at a, at a teleconference yesterday that because they're moving to the Big East next year, they're going to have to give up all their out-of-conference rivals. He won't even play Kentucky anymore. And then he winked and said, just kidding. They're trying to check who should be shooting the foul here. Watch Johnson, 15. So it should be Horford, 42, who should be shooting the foul. Yeah, and I'm going to simply say this. I think the use of the monitor is too much in college basketball. I think we go to it too often now, and it breaks up the flow of the game. Human error and make the quick decision. I think we've put a crutch out there where the officials know they can go constantly to that monitor. I'm not blaming the officials. I'm blaming the rule makers. I think the rules makers. I think the bottom line is we go to the monitor too often, and it breaks up the flow of the game. Are you okay with it at the end of the game? End situations? of the game, yes, I like it. Dean being hounded by Green out of the perimeter. Now here comes O'Bannon, and he's got a big guy, Lee, on him. Here's that mismatch again. Now Lee switches, and he's got to cover Garcia. They're switching all these screens. Somebody got a hand in there, knocked it away. Florida's got the ball. Here's David Lee, and he's fouled. That's a good foul by Dean, taking away that layup. He wants the intentional, not going to get the intentional. No. Lee's calling for it, but the officials aren't. No, he went for the ball. Oh, wait a minute. Did he get it? They did call it, I believe. Wow. They did call it. 
Take a look right here. It's coming after him. Yeah, he gets and grabs him. And got to be intentional. Wow, so it's well, see, two, you got two eyes. I got, I got one eye. You're supposed to see that. Yeah. I thought that was questionable right there. I, I, agree I thought it was questionable. Yeah. You're coming after the guy. Reaching around, trying to get to the ball, but he didn't get there. In the NBA, that would be the intentional. Because the NBA, if you stop the guy's progress to the goal, but the bottom line is, right there, he made an effort to try and come after that ball. <clears throat> Lee hits them both. Folks, join ABC in Orlando for a special one-hour presentation of the singular ABC Sports All-America team. Find out what players our panel and the Football Writers Association selected at each position. Plus, we'll have your choice for Player of the Year. It all happens about 20 minutes from now on ABC Sports. And here on ESPN at the top of the hour, Oregon against number one Illinois from the United Center. What a drive by Brewer. Nice Here come the Gators. Nice athletic move. He's got a nice presence. He likes playing. He's a team player. Plays on the defensive side. Brewer's a tenacious competitor. Dean to Garcia. The the two friends, the juniors, the stars combine to quiet the crowd here in Gainesville. Well, if you're going to win and quiet the crowd, it's got to be your stars stepping up. That's why they're stars, Dean and Garcia. Good two man play. Green, a little bit strong off the glass. Everything was perfect there for Green except the finish as he blew right by Taekwon Dean. 56 52 Louisville in a game into which the Gators have never led. Dean the drive took a hit from David Lee and Lee is called for the foul. Every time they seem to make that run, Louisville comes back with a big play. Yeah. Take a look right here. Nice drive, takes it up strong, very athletic. Good first step. Take a look at Brewer. Come on top, defense doesn't rotate over. Somebody should be rotating over, closing off that baseline. The foul on David Lee, his second. He goes out, Horford goes out. Abacar and Moss come back into the game and out for the Gators. Abacar, a three-point shooter. You know, Dick, in addition to everything else here today, Francisco Garcia has just gone out. This may be the first time that he has left the game today. I believe it's the second. Is it the second? Out early. briefly earlier. We'll get a little breather. Get him down, ready for the stretch drive. He's been sensational today in all facets of the game. And Louisville continues to cling to a lead here in Gainesville. Let's see if Florida can take advantage with Garcia on the bench. You love these kind of pre-conference matchups oh, yeah. instead of all those Cupcake City blowouts. I would love to see the SEC hook up with the Big East, let's say, and have a matchup, the Big East yeah. and the SEC. Or like, the Big 12, yeah. 12 in each league. Exactly. Yeah. Walsh being hounded and now fouled by Jenkins. It's two shots the rest of the way from now on for both teams on every foul. It's a little tired right now when you look at Louisville. I would attack that maybe with a little pressure after the conversion on the free throw line. Yep. Walsh back to the line where he is five for five today. Just two for nine from the floor, but he's got nine points. Well, a little better than last year. He was 0 for eight and he didn't score a deuce. Yep. They came in number one in America, but we had them before they went there as number one, Against getting Maryland. beat by Maryland. Billy Donovan Dick says that Matt Walsh is the most competitive player he's ever coached. And they tell us if we could come to practice regularly and see if nobody dives for loose balls, nobody takes more charges. Nobody has given his all in practice or in a game as much as Matt Walsh. Well, you want to get maximum out of your body. You're only in that uniform X number of days in your life. You want to make the most of them. And he's got him back within four. Nice stroke. And here comes a little pressure. Pressure the basketball. Green, a good defender on the ball. Matched up with Dean. If you're Florida, you're trying to negate a look out of Dean right now. Got Moss on him. Somehow that pass found Garcia right back out to Dean. Florida with the rebound. Roberson's got it. The Gators can get a little bit closer. Roberson's has been a little bit more passive offensively. They need to score right here. Yep. He's got to assert himself a little offensively. I think he's trying to distribute the ball so much that he's taking away his strength to attack the basket, to shoot the three. Average 18 per game last year, under 14 this year. He is a scoring guard, but feels he doesn't need to score this year to help them win because they've got some new kids who can really score. Well, Green allows him to go over to the second guard slot. Walsh just a little bit short, rebound Miles. Got to get it up on the glass. 
Roxy Roberson and Reeves on the floor. The handle is mostly green. So Roberson's free to try to score. They lost Miles. Moss tries to recover, but he's called for the foul. Somebody missed an assignment down low. Yeah, lack of communication. And he gives them that post presence inside they didn't have. You take a look right here at the reset. Two shots the rest of the way, both ways. Louisville has led by double digits on some occasions, and they've led the entire game. Florida has never led as Miles, the fifth-year senior, heads to the line. Oregon and number one Illinois. If you have not seen a Bruce Weber's Illini, tune in at the top of the hour from the United to Center to see a spectacular team a team that blew out Wake Forest in the ACC yeah. Big Ten Challenge they play so well together as you look at Lee coming back on the floor but Bruce Weber's done a solid job there he's got all those guys buying into his philosophy and you know when you think about Illinois certainly you think of their backcourt but I'm telling you now remember the kid's name Malik Hairston for Oregon yep. a terrific kid out of the Motor City of Detroit shocked everybody by going out to Oregon I love Roger Powell at Illinois, too. Only about 6'5", 6'6", and Luther Head is great. Neither one of those guys get enough attention. Powell's a matchup nightmare. Oh, nice zigzag. Robinson. Excellent, excellent. Excellent play. Garcia with another rebound, his eighth. Garcia has been the star of stars here. You know what? If you're if you're Billy Donovan, you got to like the looks you're getting. They're just not hitting him. Got to make that kind of three. Giannini back into the game, number 12, and now for the Cardinals. Mayo says, I'm going to dribble it out of trouble. Giannini gives him a ball handler. Here's a ball handler right here. He's a scorer. He's anything you want him He's to be. He's everything. He's anything you want him to be. He's, He's a, a distributor. Better. Stolen by Humphrey. Center it. Roberson. Two-point, three-point game as the Gators are right back in it. Nice explosive transition off the turnover. I love this crowd. This crowd has been so alive here. We'll have that at Freedom Hall next week. As they host Kentucky, noon Eastern here on ESPN. Listen to this place, man. I it's can't great. even hear you. It's great. I can't hear you. College basketball alive and well. So many stars came back this year, like Garcia, Roberson, and Walsh, and Lee, and Dean. Jenkins, no, but a foul from behind on Roberson. That's a big call going against the Gators. Yeah, you got to come up with a stop there. You got to do something on the other side. Billy Donovan and his staff, Anthony Grant and company. Jenkins driving, hanging, and drawing the foul. He'll shoot two when we come back. ESPN Full Court, bringing you maximum college basketball. As soon as this one's over, it is Roger Powell, 71% on the year. Number one Illinois getting ready to take on Oregon in front of a sellout crowd in Chicago, guys. Dave, thank you very much. It's been the Francisco Garcia Show at times here at games for today. The superstar with 17 points, 8 rebounds, 5 steals, 4 assists. But will it be enough? Can he lead his team to a big road win here in Florida? I'll tell you also, as you look right there, he's outstanding, so versatile, stuff in that stat sheet. Leading bottom, him in all of those categories. The bottom line is, he makes other people better by his presence on the floor. Because he attracts so much of the defense toward him. Most people that planted their defense have to start out with certainly Dean and Garcia. Lee and Roberson are in the game for Florida. Walsh is not. Brandon Jenkins at the line for two for Louisville. Made him think about it. That's that rule. A lot of referees don't like yeah. the rule now. New rule this year. If you're in a TV timeout zone and somebody's fouled, in the past, the player would shoot the free throws, and if they missed the second one, say, play would continue. Now they automatically go to break before the free throws. Close Jenkins them. missed a couple. Yes, sir. It might have affected them right there. But it's so. for both teams, too, so it's not one way. There's that zone right now. Get into the gap if you leave. Dick, two freshmen of the game for the Gators. Green at the point and Horford down in the paint. I would slide Lee into a gap area. Use him as possible as a passer. He's an excellent passer for a post player. Three there he small is. guards right now for Florida. Lee kicks it back out to Green. Ten on the shot clock. Take it up strong. 
Both of them were there for the follow. Neither could come up with the ball. Great effort right there by Miles. I tell you, these kids at Louisville showed a lot of heart here on a road. Great drive by Dean, and he's going to the line after the block called on Humphrey. Terrific drop. That's a five-point turnaround, man. You got a deuce down the other end. You don't get it. Now look at Dean right now. Look at change of direction. Great front change. Takes it up strong. Draws the contact. See right now, look at the gap of the defense. Look at it. See you got a big gap right here. Got to attack that gap. Dump it off. Look at it right here. Take it up strong. Take it up strong. Three-point play, Taekwon Dean, and the Cardinals are back up by six. That's a five-point swing, yep. man. Yep. You have the deuce on the other side. Now one of the freshmen to green sits down. Matt Walsh, the junior, back into the game. So all of the big three for Florida on the floor. Under six to go, down by six. Roberson's got to step up in the circle. Oh, David Lee flies to the hoop. There's a gap, baby. There's a gap, and there's a high rise up. And the Rowdy Reptiles love it. Great explosive drive. A lot more quicker than he was last year. How about good patience and the great pass by Al Horford as well. 18 now for David Lee, the high scorer for the Gators. I tell you, Dan, I can barely hear this place is rocking. Dean oh. makes it a little bit quieter right now. Let's not forget about him. He's got 18 points He today. says, you know, mine isn't as spectacular as Lee, but I'll take mine. That's Three right. versus two. <laughs> Four for seven from three-point range for Taekwon Dean. Humphrey thought about a 24-footer. Is it me? Doesn't Roberson look a little more passive yeah. offensively? He's Try a scorer. Yeah, trying to get everybody involved. Walsh. Nice pass. Lee and a foul. It seems like Roberson, somebody got to him. You're a point guard, you got to get other people involved. Yeah, you're right. And you start playing with the guy's head. He's to his score. That's the jam. Wow. Up, up, and away. Mr. Lee. He's special. I thought Horford did a great job. Right down the gap. Look at the gap in that zone. Well, he won the he won the high school at the McDonald's All American yeah, game. He won the dunking off. contest yeah, in high school. Can you see the hand? Yeah, David Lee can dunk with both hands. We've seen him lay it in with both hands. Just yeah. missed a free throw. Well, you got to make, make them. You got to make these when you're behind like this. You try to scrap to get back in the game. I'll tell you what's amazing. Louisville's been able to be in command and be ahead this entire the game. game. The whole game. The whole game. Never been behind. Nope. Two big misses by Lee, but an even bigger rebound potentially by Horford. Get some big minutes here in the second half, and he's playing well. Green is back into the game. Now at the point, Roberson slides off the ball. Walsh. Count it. I'll tell you, he's attacking the basket. Really attacking on that drive. And he's hurt again. Second time today we've seen Walsh come up limping. He's been automatic at the free throw line. Hasn't missed. Strong drive to the goal. He's waving but off the bench right now. There he is attacking the scene. Taking it up strong. He wants to go to that line. Convert right here. Another look from on top. Puts it to the left hand. And his right-handed shooter. Good left hand dribble. To get him down that gap. Tony Green with the call. He's a guy. You and I did his first ever game here against Louisiana Tech a couple of years ago. But we saw Walsh uh, score from the free throw line, mid-range jumpers, transition, three-pointers. He's got kind of an old-school game. He can score a lot of different ways. And he's big man on campus. Oh, is he big man <laughs> yes, he on is. campus? They love him here. A perfect a eight for eight from the line today for Matt Walsh. And it's down to four. Don't forget, Illinois and Oregon, the tip less than 15 minutes away. Every time Florida makes a little run, it's either Dean or it's Mr. Garcia. Here's Mr. Garcia, got his man in the air, drew the foul on the freshman Horford. You know, part of coaching, okay, we talk about this all the time, Dan. Part of coaching is understanding strengths and weaknesses of your team and to make sure that the right people are going to shoot the basketball. The one thing you're seeing this afternoon by Louisville is every time there's a run by Florida, the ball goes in the hands of either Dean or Garcia. You're right. And no other way. That's coaching. That's not by accident. They're the two leading scorers. They're both juniors. The two best players they have. He is so confident out there. There's not an inch of back down and a very tough kid, Francisco Garcia. Oh, he's went through so much in his life. Yeah. Now, a basketball game certainly not going to be a situation to intimidate him in any form or fashion, especially with that ability. And they're back up by six. He's had a spectacular afternoon. 
Green getting a lot of minutes at the point here at crunch time for Florida. And Roberson is not currently in the game for the Gators. Good look here, Brewer. That's big. Skip pass over the top of the defense. Brewer, who's really put himself psychologically as a defensive player, has some good offensive skills, was a big-time scorer in high school. Just the 4-3 in 18 attempts for Florida today. Double team on Garcia. Get him to give up the ball. That's like about 20%. Dean, the jump stop. Rebound, Gators. Again, it's Dean shooting the ball, the right guy. Dean a little bit slow to get up. Looks like he's hurt. Dean is struggling right now with some kind of an injury. Well, remember, he's had that surgery, yep. double sports hernia. Yeah, had it in the it. summer. Yes, sir. He's had some groin problems as well. Get Lee, have Lee wide open. Now Walsh gets knocked to the floor. Out of bounds and will stay with Florida. Don't you dare go away, Dick. We got a big finish. I'm not finish. going anywhere. No, I'm not going, going anywhere. anywhere. We got a big finish. <laughs> Louisville up three. Here at the Odo. This one, but we don't know if Taekwon Dean is going to be able to get back in. Maybe a cramp, maybe an ankle problem, maybe both. Look at him as he lands that left ankle. And boy, do they need Taekwon Dean in this game right now. Oh, down the stretch. He's an outstanding shooter. There he is right there, hurting. He's had really a tough last year, had that hernia problem. On the bench right now, Doris, do you have some details? Well, Kenny Klein, Sports Information Director for Louisville, just confirming cramping in both legs, guys. All right, Doris, thank you. And you know, Dean will try to get back in, if at all possible. Brandon Jenkins has taken his place. Louisville has led the entire game by as many as 12 points. The Gators and White trying to pull one out here for the late stages in front of the hometown fans. This would tie it. But Lee left it short, and Brewer just threw up a prayer. John Clockerty from the other side of the floor says he got pushed, and he'll shoot too. Wow. John Clockerty came out of nowhere with that call. Billy Donovan certainly liked it. Brewer very active. I'll tell you, he's tenacious. He really is tenacious. Number four on Francisco Garcia sends the freshman Brewer out of Portland, Tennessee, a great defender. And a McDonald's All-American sends him to the line where he rattles home the first to make it a two-point game. Four on Garcia and Dean nursing cramps on the bench. I know. If this game goes to overtime, what do you think's got the edge? Oh. Wow. No contest. But right can now, Florida get it there? Or can Florida win in regulation? Louisville's got to win this baby in regulation. Remember, Florida has never led here today. The Gators 5-1, lost here at home to Miami of Florida a week ago. The Cardinals 4-1, ranked 14. They got to give some help to Brewer with Garcia. They got to give, you can't give help like Brewer just did often. You got to stay with him. Miles working on Horford. And the fifth-year senior is fouled by the freshman. Miles will shoot two. I remember earlier this year talking to Rick Pitino. I said, what do you think will be different with your basketball team? He said, last year, Dick, he said we had zero post-presence. He said, with Miles, we'll have at least a little balance and some post-presence as you look right there. Score, foul situation, and timeout. Two shots the rest of the way. The arrow to Louisville. Miles missed all of last season with a knee injury. Now Matt Walsh back into the game for Florida replacing Brewer. You think this place would explode if oh. Florida ever took the lead? Oh. They've been waiting all day. I mean, they've been so raucous as I met with them early this morning, about 8.30, they were outside. Some of the kids told me they've been here since Thursday. Thursday, that's right. Some of the reptiles have been lining up in groups for more than 48 hours to get first row seats here to this game. And you weren't outside with me with all the kids. How come? <laughs> 8.30 he was still sleeping. Don't forget, number one Illinois taking on Oregon at the United Center as soon as we're done right here on ESPN. Turnover by the Gators. He telegraphed that dribble. Miles made the good play. Brent Musburger and Steve Lavin waiting to make that call with the Illinois-Oregon game by Buddy Brent. They're still working on Dean over on the bench. All he can do is watch in agony as Louisville tries to win this game here on the road without him. I think that's smart. Double up on him get the ball out of his hands. Miles. And which way is that going to go? They get a block. Oh, wow. Could have wow. either way. Wow. I mean, these oh. officials have a tough job, but wow on that call. Well, you know, it's going to be the way the home team usually gets that call. Take a look right here. That's Lee. Does he beat him to the spot? Wow. wow. I thought he did. I thought he did. I thought he used that elbow again. 
Look at Dean. He's still cheering. That's my guy. That's my guy. Look at him cheering. That spirit, my friend. I love it. Look at him. He's a cheerleader, even though he's not on the floor. Do it, big fella. Do it. Take us home with the W. Let us go back to Louisville with that big W. Miles misses the first. Moss back in for Horford now for the Gators. Still working on Dean. Still can't get him back into the game. And the personnel of the toughest night tonight will be whoever loses this game. The coach? Not wife. Oh, the wife. Not the coach. The wife. The wife. The coach. Oh, <laughs> Joanne and Christine. We talk. Mrs. Donovan, Christine, and Joanne Patino. I'll tell you, coaches' wives are special people. So much Here affection we and respect between the coaches again. Billy Donovan played for Rick Pitino at Providence, played for him with the Knicks, coached under him in Kentucky. Get Robinson a look right now. With Green on the floor, you got to get him a look. got to get him a look. He got one. Miles keeps it alive. He's a warrior. threw it out of bounds. Was it deflected? He's a warrior, though. He's really working on that class. That's Pitino looking out of that coach's box. So much at stake here on every play. <laughs> Roberson misses the three. Miles keeping it alive, was losing his balance out of bounds. Just tried to throw it out of bounds, and it looks like it did hit Green, and that it will be and should be Louisville basketball. I thought it hit Green yeah, as well. Yeah, I, I thought you got two eyes. I'll let you make that call. John Clockerty made the call, and we believe it's going to be Louisville ball Some when we come back. Here's a sneak peek of the ESPN original movie 3, starring Barry Pepper as Dale Earnhardt. K Jewelers premieres tonight at 9 Eastern on ESPN. This game's kind of had a, a race car, <laughs> auto racing kind of yeah, feel really all has. day long, huh? Yeah, it's this has been not been at Times Square where they got those crowds shopping. This has been Indianapolis Raceway. Palacios dribbling his way out of harm's way and finds Garcia. Taekwon Dean is back in the game with the cramps for Louisville. Well, not really surprised. If double up on Garcia, trying to get the ball out of his hands. O'Bannon, another steadying influence on nice the floor. Pass. And John Hampton on the other side of the floor had a push against Florida. I believe. Now Walsh is so talking, trying to do a little politics out there to Tony Green. Wait a minute, who's this going on? The PA announcer has announced something. Oh, Rick Pitino That's confused furious. everybody. We're all confused. We're going against Louisville. Going against it's Louisville. It's Garcia on a charge. That's fine. If it's Garcia, That's five, right? if it's Garcia, he's gone. There's uh, John Hampton, if this is the call, says that after Garcia passed the ball off, he continued into the defender, and it was called for a charge. But there's still a ton of confusion on the floor. You know, too much confusion. You're a referee. You make your call, and you play. You don't explain it to 5,000 people. You don't break up the flow. You make the call with authority. Keep your eyes on Garcia after he passes the ball. You watch him right here. There's the pass. Now they're going to call him for the contact right there. Call him for the contact after the play. And Garcia slowly making his way to the bench. The best player wow. on the floor today is done with a minute and 40 seconds to go. And Rick Pitino wants a piece of the official who made the call, John Hampton. See, I think you got to make a call and make him with authority. No one like this indifference, not sure, yeah. confused. Well, it was so far away from where the ball was, and it was so long after the pass was made, nobody was really looking over there. Well, you got to take advantage right now with him out of the lineup. Dorian Green. And not the guy you want to shoot the ball. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, options down the stretch. You got Walsh, Robinson, and Lee, and yeah. you got a young kid shooting who's not a scorer. Well, as Walsh said in that quote that you referenced earlier after the loss to Miami, the reason they lost is they didn't share the basketball late in the game. Now Dean gets knocked down and already injured with the, the cramping problems. Needs to be held back up, and now he'll shoot a couple of free throws. 
right now you come down and stretch the right people got to win or lose the game for you you got to put the ball in the hands of the right people i love the attitude of dean and garcia look at him cheering trying to get all his teammates fired up not only did he play a super game he's going to be the cheerleader of the week i'm going to pick him up on my website <laughs> cheerleader of the week when i do my weekly awards number four on torian green dean at the line for two he's automatic playing in pain playing hurt Dean is 16 for 18 from the free throw line this season. Yeah, he's like automatic on the line. And he's playing in a lot of pain. He's hurt. Torian Green has now gone out for Florida. See right there. Oh, Somebody missed one. Leg playing yep. could affect your shot. He's really in. You can see the kid is struggling. There he is playing on the defensive side now. Still a two possession game. Give Barely it a side. To go. Leash want the ball inside. Leash one. Jenkins with a steal. What a hustle play. Oh, oh gotta oh, be intentional. Oh, that's intentional. Yeah. That's intentional. Corey or Adrian Moss, rather, is going to get called for the intentional foul after he clubbed Brandon Jenkins. I don't no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Two shots in the basketball. Never going for the ball here, going for the body. There's Jenkins. Now watch this. Oh, it is absolutely. No doubt. That's going to be close to flagrant. Yeah. Absolutely no doubt about that. Right call was made. Moss is gone. That's his fifth. Jenkins will shoot two. Louisville will retain possession. I mean, that's dangerous, what he did right it's there. It's almost flagrant. Yep. And the bottom line is now Jenkins missed two a little bit earlier. He's going to that free throw line. Patino has coached his heart out with a limited with limited personnel today on the road. Wait till he gets his kids next year. Yep. Whoa, they're going to be something special. Gar the Garcia goal. fouling out for Louisville. Moss is now gone for Florida. Garcia, by the way, fouled out with 19 points, eight rebounds, five steals, and four assists. And also did a great job defensively, yep. anticipating. They're underway up at the United Center in Chicago, and we'll send you to Oregon and number one Illinois as soon as this game is done. The Reptiles trying to stay rowdy. But now they're down five, and don't forget, Louisville retains possession. Garcia still cheering over on that bench. This is the most passive offensively I have seen Anthony Robinson. Agreed. He really has yeah. not wanted the ball for some reason and utilized that great offensive ability he has. Dean on the drive. Palacios, tough catch. The clock is the friend right now of the Cardinals. They can run off 25 more seconds. Dean, boy, you didn't need that. You didn't need no, it with 20 on the shot clock. You got to take time off yeah. the clock. He's got to know better. He is really hurting. He's hurt again. Yeah. Oh, he is hurting on each possession. They are leaving it all on the floor right now. Even though he made a mistake taking the shot, he has given everything that he's got out there. Right now, he's a long-range shooter. But look at the pain. Look at the way he goes down to the floor. You can see that he can't get his legs into his shot. People don't realize you shoot with your legs as well as you do with your hands. Here goes Mr. Brewer to the free throw line. He's going to become special at Florida. Let's go quickly to Doris Burke. Doris? Well, you've been talking about Roberson's passivity. Remember, he's taken a lot of hits publicly for what people perceive as selfish play. Billy Donovan would say absolutely not. But you wonder, Roberson has said, guys, I have absolutely heard people talk about the fact that I'm selfish. He said, I am anything but. Well, you know what, Doris? That he's hurting himself today because he's trying to play in such an selfish way he's negating his great offensive skills timeout with 44 seconds to go time now to take a look back on this date in college basketball history I honestly believe we're looking at the best two big men in the United States in college right now. It was the only time Patrick Ewing and Ralph Sampson would meet in college. Both these guys are complete players. Oh, and Ewing right in his face at the other end. Pass Wilson. Sampson follows. Sampson outscored Ewing 23-16 and Virginia won. We've seen the dandy and we hope you've enjoyed it. One of the great matchups, one of the great games that everybody talked about, Ralph Sampson, Patrick Ewing in the early 80s. You know, Patrick Ewing, my 25 years on TV plus, I would rate him right up there as one of the most influential players in the 25 years. What a dominant yep. force. On the other side, you look at Ralph Sampson, three times the college player of the year and not in the Hall of Fame. That's hard to believe because really, I don't know of anybody else that's three times player of the year, not in the Hall of they, Fame. They need a wing specifically for college 
huge contribution. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Not talking NBA. Yeah. I think sometimes we look at what people do on the NBA level in determining that status. Louisville with the ball up three, under a minute to go. Garcia has fouled out. Dean is playing in pain because of cramps in both legs. You don't want to foul this kid. He's a great free throw shooter. Florida's not done yet. This is where you miss Francisco Garcia's experience on the floor. I agree with Doris. I think that some of those people have gotten into the head of Anthony Robeson and have him worried about how his style of play affects the team rather than let him just play. But this kid is too good, yeah. man. He's got to play. And he's shown in his first couple of years, Dick, He's a big-time shot maker at crunch time as well. Ask Georgia one year. Yep. Put a show on making threes late in the game. A three would tie it. Lee will take it. Well, okay. again, not the guy they want taking the exactly. three. Exactly. Yep. Who would you rather shoot the three there, Lee or Robeson? And Walsh didn't get a touch that time down the floor. Anthony Robeson is right now powering and sulking on the floor, and he's just trying basically to appease people rather than play basketball. And that's a shame because he's too talented and too good. I can see it. You can see his body language. I've been around the game a lot of years. He's, he's really too good. He's letting people affect them with their writing rather than just play. This kid has got talent. And for the second time in the last minute or so, Florida's shot is a three-point attempt by David Lee, who does not have a three this year, had not even taken a three prior to this game. I would rather have Anthony take the three. I mean, when I say pounding something, I mean that you can see he's sort of trying to, I don't know, his body language is not what you'd like to see. Yeah, there's no the swagger. Game, uh, the game come exactly, yeah, no swagger. No swagger, and he's I, got swagger. I knew you would say it really beautifully, <laughs> Mr. Shulman. He's a great kid. Billy Donovan said he's not cocky. He's a great kid. But the way he carries himself on the floor, it's he knows he's good. He knows what he can do. But you're right, his, his body language is different today. You don't see that swagger at all here this no, afternoon. not at all. Timeout taken by the Gators. One more free throw coming for Louisville. Just 13.6 seconds to play. And some of the folks have now started filing out of the O'Connell Center, feeling that the die has been cast in favor of the Cardinals here today. Looks like Louisville, if they can hang on, it will beat Florida for the second year in a row. And then Billy Donovan will still be winless all time against his mentor, Rick Pitino, 0-6. They're still working on Dean as he stands in the timeout. They want to get him back in there for the last 13 seconds. Dean has had a sensational day. He's hit four threes, and he's got 22 points. Francisco Garcia, who fouled out about a minute ago on kind of an iffy call, with 19 points, eight rebounds. The Stars played like stars for Rick Pitino's team today. They really did, and they just cannot, cannot go to overtime. 13 seconds, a lot of time. I love the fact look, that Garcia look, is cheering. Now look he's the water players. guy, too. Now he's bringing everybody water over there. He's a great kid. Yep. He is what you call a great teammate. That's a lot of love. That's part of family, and that's what they preach. I feel bad for Anthony Robinson because Doris hit home with her statement about what he's feeling, about unselfishness. Brandon Jenkins misses the second, but it's still a four-point game. Florida needs a quick score. score. quick. Pack the basket. Roberson the all basket. the way. He's too talented, my friend. Eight bounce. seconds left. Two-point game. Timeout, Louisville. That is the last timeout for Louisville. Florida is out of timeout. So wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. Louisville has one full timeout remaining, according to the scoreboard. Florida's out. Well, right now, you've got to basically try to have to bounce the steal or foul immediately. Well, we have a moment. Let's check in on the Oregon-Illinois game that's coming up next. Here's Dave Refson. Okay, Dan, it is underway at the United Center in the Illini. We talk a lot about the backcourt, but getting the big guy involved, James Augustine off the feet here from Roger Powell. And the Illini looking very good early on top, 12 to 6. Dan and Dick. All right, Dave, looking forward to the whole country getting taken to that game as soon as this one is done. Wow. The Florida Gators have trailed from the moment this game began. They're down two right now. Louisville's got the ball. Eight seconds left. What do the Gators do? Well, right now, you got to basically try that steal, and you got to foul immediately, put them on the line, and hope you come back and hit a dramatic shot and maybe win and hope they come up empty. I mean, you got to shine the dough. I too. made it through 39 right minutes and 52 <laughs> seconds without shining the dough. What a great Just afternoon, once. though. It's what a great, great afternoon. Well, it really even though 
Well, this is a great atmosphere here, even though they're a little bit quiet right now. Roberson on the bench. He'll come in after the free throws. If they get a steal, he's not going to be in there for offense. I really believe he's a beaten kid, and I think he's got to get back his confidence. If they, his foul, if they foul them, then Roberson will come back in. Can't waste too oh, much boy, time. Letting time gotta go waste away. Too much time. Got to waste too much yep. time. So three seconds come off the clock. Now Louisville will shoot the free throws, and now Roberson's getting ready to come back in. So this was the plan. Take him out for D, bring him back in for O. But if Palacios makes both, this baby's basically over. Yeah, he's a young kid now, put in a pressure situation here on that free throw line. First attempt today, 8 for 13 on the season. Boy, no hesitation. Nice stroke there. Huh? Nice stroke there. They're talking about him. Ultimately, they think if he gets a little more skilled offensively, he has a lot of the body and way and technique of a Mashburn. And that's, I'm saying a lot. A but Jamal Mashburn yeah. is certainly was special for Rick Pitino at Kentucky. But this could be a big moment for him. He converts this. It's over. Wow. It's over. What a cool customer. What One a great bounce buries them both. I tell you, my friend, got an unbelievable scoop if he can pull this game out now, Florida. <laughs> I tell you that. Right Five now, what a, left. what a great effort by the kids of Louisville. Incredible effort. I mean, Mr. Patino has to be getting an A-plus today, beating his pupil with a terrific performance. A great, great job with a lot of heart and guts. Despite the injuries, they win 74-70. to Coming up next, Oregon and Illinois. For Dick Vitale and Doris Burke, I'm Dan Shulman. Thanks for watching.